Hey everybody, I'm Bill and I'm here to coach you up on how to finish your basement. And when you're trying to finish your basement, it's important to know the construction steps involved in trying to get it done. What is the actual work and the schedule and how it all flows to get it done in terms of phases, right? So think about how does it work? Where do you start? Where do you end? What's next? Individually, step by step by step. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna go over that to give you an idea of what you should be doing first, how it all comes together. I typically break it down into bigger phases. So you're gonna have your rough in, you're gonna have drywall, and you're gonna have your finishing. Now, in those three phases, they're broken down into sub phases. In your rough in phases, you're gonna have any type of demo. So if you have to break anything, break any concrete or whatever, if you have to take things away to get back to the basement you want, demolition is gonna be your first subtask, right? Removing insulation if you wanna re insulate, all that kind of stuff. Are you putting underground plumbing in? Are you gonna to have to break concrete to get that done? Those are your big steps. So anything that's gonna happen underground, you need to happen first as part of your rough-in. Typically, if you don't have a basement bathroom roughed in, you're gonna need the concrete broken and the drains put in. And then here in Ontario, in Canada, you would get inspection and then the concrete goes over. So that's the first part of your rough-in. We'll call that demo. Next is going to be subfloor. We use the Delta subfloor system or the barricade or the dry course system. They're those two by two subfloor tiles. And those are the easiest ones to use and the most DIY friendly in my opinion. Other people may have an opinion, but I like those. They're easy to get down into your basement. They're easy to move around. So that's your first phase. And then we go after the subfloor. We are going to build our walls on top of that. Whether you're gonna fasten down your subfloor or not, that's up to you. But we're gonna build the walls on top of the subfloor to give it a little more make it a little more sturdy and it saves time. If you frame your walls first and then you go put in your subfloor, you gotta cut around all the walls and I, that's just more time consuming. You're DIYing this, you're doing this on weekends or nights, you wanna be as most efficient as possible to get this done. So subfloor first, then you're framing your walls. So you're framing your perimeter walls, you're framing your divisions. So you're framing out all your rooms and how they're separated, your doorways. We do our bulkheads at the drywood, drywall phase, but if you wanna do your bulkheads in a ladder form, we'll get into that in another video. And when you do your framing, knock yourself out. That's There's lots of videos out there for that. So if you just Google how to build a bulkhead, you can do that, but we'll be doing a video later on about it as well. So you get all your framing done. Now you need your electrical and mechanical done. So you're gonna have your plumbing that's above ground done. So if you're having a bathroom or a bar sink or a laundry tub, you need the drains and the water lines done. Now, keep in mind, it's always easier to get water to go somewhere than it is to get the water to go away. So whenever you're thinking about your basement and moving things around, remember the water has to go away. Getting it there, not that hard. You want it to go away. Your plumbing, then you're doing your HVAC, which is your ventilation, your heat runs, your bathroom fan, your return air, all of those. You have to make a decision. Are you gonna be dropping your heat runs to the floor? You have to get proper insulation in behind that. So insulation is the step after. However, if you're putting your ductwork in the walls, you have to make sure that if the house wrap is on, like the insulation blanket is on, that you're getting the proper R value behind your ductwork because you don't want cold in behind the hot air that you're gonna be pushing out. That just takes away from the effect. Not the best. And then you're gonna to wanna to return air so it pulls the air across. Now, when we have small basements like a bungalow, uh, maybe something in a townhouse that's 350 square feet, dropping the heat runs, you know, usually you're gonna have one or two. It can be maybe not that great an effect or worth the expense, especially if you're putting a subfloor because the biggest place that you're gonna bleed heat if you're in a newer house that has insulation blanket or you're insulating the walls is the subfloor because concrete's thirsty, it's gonna take in water. So the subfloor is, if you're using regular, it will make it less cold. If you're using the insulated subfloor panels, that's a little bit better. There is a cost difference there. So we've got our subfloor down, 
we've got our framing done, we've got our plumbing roughing done, we've got our HVAC done. Now you need all your plugs and receptacles and your lights and all of that put together. So your electrician is going to come in later. He's the easier one to run because it, the wires are smaller. The duct work is the one that has the biggest room to take and your plumbing, depending on if you have a rough in or not, that may not occupy the same space. Basements are different than your upper floors. Your HVAC guy and your plumber are not competing for the same joist runs or the same real estate in terms of the rough in. Now, the final phase of your rough in is going to be insulation. So we have two ways to think about it. You're going to think about your insulation in your walls for heat. And you're going to think about your soundproofing insulation in the ceiling. We go with rock sol in the ceiling. It's thicker. It's more dense. Uh, there is quiet zone from fiberglass, which apparently has the same sound rating, but I'm not as big a fan of that for the effect. When you consider soundproofing in your basement, realize two things. Your ductwork goes throughout your house. Those are not that easy to soundproof. Second, you're going to be able to soften the sound from down to up. So you're going to hear less downstairs, but from up to down, it's going to be harder to mitigate that sound, especially with footprints. And if your stairwell, you know, if you're going to go as far as really soundproofing it, you're going to need to invest in a safe and sound door at the top of the stairs and think about how you're going to deal with the ceiling in the bulkheads. Are you going to use five eights? But typically, Basements are done for people's kids and you know it's it's not that big of an expense. They or it's not that big of a commitment that people want to make to soundproofing for the expense because it, the cost starts to escalate. And if you're just making a playroom for your kids, you don't want to overspend because you're a young family and you need the money elsewhere. So insulation is next. Now that completes all your rough ends. We're going to move to the drywall phase and the reason I put drywall as its own phase is because it can take a considerable amount of time. That includes hanging the drywall, you're going to do your ceilings, you're going to do your walls and then if you choose to you're going to do your bulkheads then. We'll make a separate video on how to make bulkheads at the drywall stage later which is the best way to do it or I think the best way to do it which I only discovered years later but this isn't about me this is about you. So. You're going to do your drywall once you get the board up your next phase is to tape put on the corner beads this is the long one this is where it, it each phase needs to dry so you're going to pre-fill you're going to run your tapes you're going to put your beads on then you're going to coat you're going to coat you're going to sand in basements drying time can be an obstacle because it can be damp you're not getting the same air circulation it's colder so you want to think about getting a dehumidifier down there and maybe a heater and maybe a fan. The heater isn't so important because when you think about it, the heat's going to dry it from the outside in. So you're not going to know if it's cured on the inside and it's more likely going to lead the tapes to shrink. You want the drywall to dry from the inside and evenly. So that's what the dehumidifier is for. The fan just keeps the air moving as well. Once drywall is done and sanded out, your next phases are your finishes. So you're going to go with paint, floor, doors, trim, and then your electrical finish, your plumbing finish, where they install the toilet and all of that, the tub, the shower, whatever you have in there, the fixtures, the vanity, all that, and then your HVAC. After all said and done, you're going to go about touch-ups. I mean, if you have little kids, I don't know the point of touch-ups because they're just going to ruin it. I got two little boys that are savages. I'm going to wait till they move out to do touch-ups because they, it's sticks, balls, superheroes thrown at the wall, wrestling matches. It's all dinged up. So I'm hoping this is helpful. If there's something I missed that you wanted to know about, Put it down there. I'm going to go into breaking all these down in later videos of each phase and what you want to think about so that you can get, dive in more detail and figure out what's DIY friendly and what's not. I mean, if you're going to finish your basement, you don't have to do it all yourself and you don't have to do it all at once. If you're not using your basement and you're on a budget, doing it in phases helps and understanding what those phases are and where to allocate your money is the purpose of this video to help you understand the process. So I hope that helps 
and carry on and get to work. <laughs>